from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to the Windy City, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman, Veeam On 2018, hashtag Veeam On. The husband of Mrs. Philbin is here. <laughs> the, the Astros, Warriors, Eagles, and whoever wins the Stanley Cup this year fan. Yep. Bill Philbin, Senior Vice President and Global Chief Technology Officer for Hybrid IT for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Good friend of theCUBE. Hey, buddy. Awesome seeing good, you again. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Every time you introduce me, it's something new, so I can't wait to share that with Mrs. Philbin. Well, she, like Stu says, that's where you go for the information. That's exactly <laughs> right. right. That's exactly so, right. So, another great keynote here. You stole the show last year. You're, you're vying for, for top spot, top yeah. gun this year, so <laughs> how do you feel? I, it, was, it was good. I mean, you know, I, I, was, I said, I think the, the funny thing about you know, Veeam and Hewlett Packard is, we have so much in common, the agenda's the same. It was almost hard to actually have, create a unique slide set that was different from what they said versus what we said. And I think that after 32 years, Mrs. Philbin and I, we're not quite to finish each other's sentences, but I know, what, yeah, I know what she wants me to do without her telling me at this point. So, Veeam and, and HPE has, have, have that kind of relationship. Well, Veeam has a tendency and a, and a way of inserting itself into an ecosystem, and it's certainly That's embedded right. itself into the HPE ecosystem. And I, and I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's, that's a lot of credit to, to Peter McKay. You know, he's joined now, what it was, 23, 24 months ago, and he sort of brought that partner-centric viewpoint, grew the team around us, um, and uh, they're, they're really a, uh, they're who we, who we sort of pull out for other partners, say, hey, look, this is what these guys are doing, this is what you need to do to be successful in a sprawling enterprise like, uh, like Hewlett Packard. So uh, he's done a really, really good job, I think. So give us an update on that sprawling enterprise. We make hybrid IT simple is right. your, your mantra. Um, how's that going? Uh, you know, where does your, your group fit in? So we're a couple quarters into the, you know, the new tenure of uh, Antonio Neri being the, C the CEO, the engineer sort of turned, to turn CEO. Right? Got to make you happy. That right. absolutely makes me and, and, and the thousands and thousands of engineers happy. Um, Great first quarter. We'll see what happens, sort of in, in quarter number in quarter number two. There's a lot of focus within the company now that we've sort of have you know divested ourselves of the things that were less important. Focus on enterprise infrastructure customers around a couple of key concepts. Certainly, we're pushing synergy, uh, sort of the the, uh, the the synergy platform. Second, pushing and talking about one sphere, our hybrid you know hybrid IT, hybrid cloud uh, offering. Three, you know, we've had a lot of success in storage. Certainly the Nimble acquisition, which is hard to believe, was now uh, almost consummated. It's, well, it's, well over, it's almost a year ago, right? It's a year yep. ago, actually in May. I just got off a holiday with Mrs. Philbin. Last year, in a holiday, I was closing the Nimble transaction in the middle of the Indian Ocean, talking Wi-Fi <laughs> on the boat via Google Voice to San Jose. There's nowhere now. Always can, on. Yeah, always <laughs> on, exactly right. Hyper, talk about hyper-availability. <laughs> um, and so I think you know we're pushing on that, you know, pushing on that, and then we've got you know we uh, you know re you know renamed our, our services offering to Point Next offering, focusing around you know transformation, et cetera. So you know I think the business is really clicking on all cylinders, and I think you know focus is actually quite interesting. You know you often focus on what we don't have versus only focusing on what remains, and just like any startup, you focus on the first market segment, second market segment. Hewlett Packard is focused on enterprise infrastructure as a profession. I think that's, you know, I think that's that's bode, bode well for us. Yeah, Bill, uh, one of the things uh, we were talking about on in the intro is, uh, you know, Veeam getting much deeper with their partners. One right. of the things we highlighted is there's a couple of partners have it in the price book. Yeah. Uh, and you know, what, what does that mean from a go-to-market standpoint that uh, it's a little bit more seamless, it's uh, you know, not invented by HP, but uh, you know, right. part, 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 part of the whole solution? Well, you know, I said to, to Peter McKay on stage, you know, 18 months ago we did this transaction, which at the time was considered pretty revolutionary, given the fact we had other things in the portfolio at that point that did data protection. And it was what, you know, first and foremost, is what our customers wanted and asked for. They wanted a more seamless transaction between the two organizations. So we sort of went ahead and did that. Second, there's always been a strong inter, you know, engineering relationship between the two companies, but if it's still talking to two partners at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You know, it, an integrated offering on the same price list, on the same PO, supported by both companies together is really what you know, customers are looking for. And as I, as I said in the keynote, you know, we closed the single biggest transaction in Veeam's history 
which was a Hewlett Packard and Veeam win. You know, for every seven dollars, I think it was of Hewlett Packard that we closed, a dollar of it was Veeam. And that's sort of the power of the partnership, um, you know, demonstrated by the two companies coming together. And it's hard to believe. It's again, 18 months. Uh, you know, that's a pretty impressive track record. Yeah, you're obviously not sharing, you know, any names on that deal. Uh, but could you share with us uh, any other information that's, you know, public? Why did you win? Maybe you could share the sort of the, the type of win that mm. it was. Why HPE and Veeam? Yeah, so we're, the, the customer obviously is uh, not prepared to have us sort of uh, talk about their name for, uh, uh, for now anyway. But essentially what the customer was, was, was looking for was a uh, complete sort of backup and recovery solution that covered not only sort of traditional virtualized environments, but also gave them out, outlet to the cloud. Right? More and more customers, and as I said in my keynote, it's more than keeping a, a copy of your data between your primary and secondary. You need a third copy because guess what happens? And I said this last year, if you remember, boo-boos happen quickly, <laughs> right? Something right. changed and deleted here, actually fast replicates here. You need a third copy to be complete. They were looking for that. And, they, and third, they were looking for sort of the, the, they were already an HP customer. They were looking for solution offerings that would allow them to amortize their existing real estate. And so those are the three reasons. And it's, but your third copy model is mm -hmm. different than having to build a third data center. Correct. Right? It's, a, it's a much more space efficient, you know, uh, modern approach. Can yeah, you so, explain that? So, so together with Veeam and our Store Once, which is our disk-based backup target, roughly last year we announced this capability called Cloud Bank, which allows you to sort of keep a copy in any S3-ish S3 compli compliant interface. So it could be on-prem and on OpenStack uh, implementation, or it can be in any of the web, web services providers and it's done in an efficient sort of uh, data protected uh, dedupe uh, capability. So it's an efficient way to sort of keep a copy of what we call uh, Hail Mary data, yeah. right? You hope you never need it, right? right? Uh, efficient way to sort of, uh, sort of do that. Okay, um, one of the big topics of discussion these days is, is ransomware. What are your thoughts on ransomware? Well, you know, it's uh, it's funny. You know, uh, you know, I always thought ransomware was something that you, you that you wore when you were dropping off the money, right? And so uh, apparently, it means something more than that. Yeah, it more, maybe I think more so. More than that now. <laughs> so, at, at last year at uh, at Discover, we had a um, a customer uh, who was a um, a meat processor. Okay, a meat processor. Now. You know, you can imagine what kind of customers you're going to ask. <laughs> customers does meat processing, but it actually infected their uh, servers that actually helped them run their meat processing capability. Now, that is not a business that you would expect someone to call you up and say, "Hi, we have your data. Give us a thousand dollars, and we'll give you your data back." It's a meat processing uh, company, or, or you know, a, uh, or a gourmet food provider. I think is probably more more typical way they would present it. But if they're if that's happening to that sort of line of business. Imagine what's happening to power plants, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so the ransomware stuff is really is, is real. So if you think about you know, HP, we developed the most secure server with our Gen 10 platform, right? We actually guarantee and actually look at changes being made in the firmware environment and we'll cover them for you automatically. We've got the Veeam sort of capability to, to sort of recover. And I, I think we were talking about in the, in, the, in the preview, we used to measure availability and how many nines you had. Mm -hmm. Now, unavailability is the only thing that customers care about. And if you go to a customer and say, you know what, it's okay, you're only .0001 of the rest of our customers, that's not a good story, right? right? It's not about when something happens, or if something happens, it's when something's going to happen. And the power of sort of uh, a Veeam and HP together prevents you know, bad things from happening, right? Yep. Bill, it's interesting. I know yeah. in my career, it's, it's been a significant shift. It used to be, let's harden it as much as we possible. Yeah. Dual redundancy, hardware focused, but hardware eventually breaks. It does. Today, it's it's a software world. It's distributed architectures. I look at you know things like your, your synergy solution. It, right. It's it's much more modular and componentized. Maybe you could talk a little bit about some of those shifts as to how we build availability architecturally, how the solutions like the HP e and uh, Veeam meet the new needs of, of what we need as opposed to kind of the old way of doing yeah, things. Yeah, so it's, it's actually interesting, you know, so a lot of customers are looking at software-defined infrastructures as a way of um, amortizing their existing infrastructure and it's actually a cost savings, but I equate it to sort of making a decision to buy Mrs. Philbin a chest of drawers at a furniture store or going to Home Depot, buying the wood, 
milling the wood and, and actually creating something myself. Now, the good news about software-defined infrastructure is, is just like me making Mrs. Philip in a chest of drawers, is at the end, I, I can, it's mine, right? I've got it to my specifications. The bad news about software-defined infrastructures is when there's a problem, Mrs. Philbin isn't calling the furniture store. She's calling me, right? And so when you think about software-defined infrastructures, you have to imagine two things. One is, are you prepared to you know, write an application that is, it is ready to resolve the kinds of data resiliency and data availability uh, capabilities that the hardware manufacturers have built into systems for 20 years? Now, if you've got a unique system, that does one thing, it's probably easy. Imagine hosting 160 different applications like the, that was mentioned on the stage today and creating resiliency for that. So my conversation with customers about software defined is please go in wide open. Number two, please think about resiliency, not at the storage level, but also think about resiliency at the application level. You have got to provide for a, a time when something is not as available as, as you think it is. And, and make those, make those, those uh, make those steps consciously. Let me ask you a, sort of a, from, yeah. from a technologist's perspective. Yeah. If I understand you correctly, um, so if I'm Oracle, I can, I can do things in the application sure. um, to accomplish that outcome. But you're not an application ISV, that's right. so you have to do things in your architecture and assume that any application that's running can recover. Correct. Is that right? So, so can you help us understand that, how you approach that problem architecturally. Well, so I think you know, and we, we haven't talked about big data, but or or, or infosite. But if you think about it, the way to actually best protect the customer's um, uh, uh, infrastructure is to actually monitor their infrastructure, compare their results to what others are, re are receiving, recommend ways that they can actually tune up that infrastructure, and then eventually act in their behalf to ch make the changes to the infrastructure so they're always protected. As I said, I said in my keynote, it's getting to a point where you actually can't do all that stuff yourself. So the key, one of the key strategies around uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is to take the InfoSight capability, which is basically machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence sort of capability, and, and deliver a system which helps customers be always on. That's the first thing that I think you can do. Uh, Dave. Okay, so and you're, and you're going to be really good about making sure I get out. Of I it. am. You, we got like two minutes, and I want to yeah. use every second I have all of right. you. So. Okay, so, so you, I want to follow up on the yeah. info site. You've, you've brought that out beyond uh, just Nimble. That's right. I think you brought it to 3PAR and you're That's pushing right. it out throughout your entire uh, our portfolio, yeah, so right? Yeah, for, so for, for, for customers who are going to see us at Discover, we've got some interesting things we'll talk about there, but effectively it is to roll it out, roll it out across the portfolio because as I said it, you know, in my keynote, it's not really easy to sort of predict what, why availability is an issue. Is it a host issue? Is it a software issue? Is it a networking issue? Is it a storage issue? What InfoSight eventually provides is a set of hooks that allow you to, to meter and measure and, ma and manage your entire infrastructure and get it to a point where it's actually subscribing to the best practice of the organization or, or, uh, or application provider. One of the things you hear a lot about is how do you take you know, backup and recovery, which is largely an insurance business, and create value out of it? Um, GDPR is this sort of heinous yeah. you know, set of regulations, everybody's got to pay attention to it. Are we finally seeing the day where the, the backup, data protection, governance approach can actually bring value to the rest of the organization? Or is it still just insurance, deal with it? So I think, um, if you, I would say two things, Dave. One is, I think if you look at what the Nimble just announced uh, with their secondary flash array, where we can keep it a very cost-effective copy of the data on an array that looks like the array you copied it from, that can be used for DevOps, can be used in the event of a failure, et cetera. I think we're starting to see technologies available now that where that, um, that um, happens. Second, the ability to sort of make a copy of that in the cloud and actually bring up your most critical applications to the cloud by using a synergy or a one sphere capability so that you can actually keep a hot standby. Uh, I think we're starting to see that. So I think, um, you know, backup is moving from a cost of doing business to something that's vital, uh, vital in the enterprise. But always remember that um, the, the best time to think about a backup is before you need it. It's the worst time to think about a backup is when you need it. Yeah, and, and I think you'd agree that the, 
data protection as a, as a topic is moving up in the minds of, of CXO and boards of directors and, and the like. Yeah, and I think, you know, so unfortunately, some of these bad actors that are out there, right, the, you know, the, the, the CNNs and the, has, you know, this is, not, this is caught more than just the IT community uh, press, mm. it's actually caught the business press, and I think it's drawing a lot more attention around the reason why people should think about uh, availability. All right, you got to go, you got to catch a I plane. Go. Uh, but just give a little tease for HPE Discover, it's coming up in June, it's a great conference that you guys have every year, twice a year you do this big, one in the US, one in Europe. What's, give us a tease for June. I would say this is going to be the most exciting HPE Discover uh, on record, and this is sort of uh, Antonio's opportunity to sort of talk to you about what's headed, um, what's headed forward for Hewlett Packard. So be there or be square. Okay. Dating myself. Well, okay, we're square. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, thank you, Bill, for coming okay. on theCUBE. Uh, and we'll be right back, right after this short break. We're at VeeamON 2018 in Chicago. Thanks for watching. <laughs>